Okay. Hmm. Alex Films presents True Stories Narrated by Jim Harris I begin with another true story this is about me and Papa on the farm. They bought this farm back in the early 70s. It was a second home. Now, this old farmhouse, it was old. I tell you, it was really old. There was no plumbing in it. There was no running water. What water they had was a cistern that was by the house. Now, if you don't know what a cistern is, is when the rains came, they hit the roof, and they had the gutter system down in this this cistern this like a well hand dug well area and that was where the water come from that's what you drunk from you wash with you clean with whatever so once in a while they put in a little bit of bleach killer bacteria but it had a hand pump and that's where we got our water from well anyway papa decided he wanted to have a well drilled out there now because it's in the mountains of west virginia it's way up high and to get water is a hard thing to do when you drill a well well they brought a, a rig in there and they drilled and they drilled and they drilled and guess what? Hey Jake, did you hit anything yet? What? Did you hit anything yet? Oh, not yet. Okay, should we check it again? What? Should we check it again? Oh yeah, just a second. Let me turn this thing off. Okay, let me see here. It looks dry. Yeah, well, let's test it again. Uh, yeah, it's dry. Uh. They got a dry hole. That's what they happen. Now, Popball's pretty discouraged. You know, you can understand. You put, put all this good money into this dry hole. So he'd walk around and get little pebbles once in a while and drop it down into that hole. And he'd hear this splash of water. And Popball got thinking, you know what? There may be a vein there we just got the side of. It needs to be opened up. Now, he didn't know if it was just surface water or maybe it was a vein. So he decided what we need to do is get some dynamite and drop it down there and, and blow that thing up and open that vein up. Well, you know, they don't sell dynamite at your local hardware. You don't go in and say, listen, I need I need a pound of half-inch bolts and, and nuts with some lock washers. And, oh, yes, I need two sticks of dynamite. <laughs> you just don't work that way if you know what I mean. Anyway, my uncle, somehow my uncle got about two or three sticks of dynamite. Now, where he got it at, I can't not remember. Now, you know, he said he got it legally. <laughs> Of course he did. He wouldn't do anything illegal. Anyway, so we got this two or three sticks of dynamite and blasting caps. Well, one day we was out there. It was me, Papa, Mama, and my daddy. Now, understand, I'm about 20 years old. Daddy's in his 40s, but Mama and Papa are in their 60s. <laughs> you understand what I mean here a little bit. Anyway, so what we decided to do is get a big black plastic bag and, and put the dynamite with the blasting caps wrapped in there so when it got to the water it wouldn't you know mess it up anyway so we wrapped it all in there and we got wires hooked to the blasting cap and so we dropped that those this wrapped dynamite down into the hole and so we got as much as we could get in there but when the wire ran out <laughs> Yeah, it was only about 10 feet from the hole. So the deal was that you take this wire and you touch a flashlight battery and that sets off the blasting caps, which in turn sets off the dynamite. So we're standing there and Papa says, James, he says, I want you to hold the battery and I'm going to touch together with these two wires and that's going to set off the dynamite. I said, wait a minute, Papa, we, we ain't very far from this well. 
when that thing goes off, you know, we love to get splattered. He says, no, he says, what we'll do, you hold the battery and I'll touch it together. And once I touch it, we'll simply just run around inside the house and everything will be just fine. <laughs> You're right. My daddy was standing there. He said, hey, so I'll hold the battery. So dad's holding the battery. Now, we're, I'm still standing there. Mama's there, Papa, Dad, and me. So as Dad's holding the battery, Papa, with his back towards the well, <laughs> when, when he touched the wires to the battery, and I'll stop right here. I'm going to try to give this to you in slow motion, but I'm telling you, it was like a war zone. When he touched those wires together, I mean immediately, <laughs> immediately before he get the wires off the battery, that thing went off. And there was rocks, and there was dirt, and there was there was plastic bag. It exploded. It was a cannon, literally coming, shooting up from the earth. And before we could even get a breath, I'll tell you what stuff is being splattered all around us. So we took off running as hard as we could. Now remember, Papa and Mama was in their 60s. <laughs> when Dad went around the house, my Mama passed him at a full run. <laughs> I've probably seen my mom run twice, once then and one time she was running from the snake on the farm. Anyway, it was beautiful. We, it was a big explosion. We put in time and money and effort in this thing. But in the end, it was useless. It was dead works. <laughs> I mean, because time proved out that that vein wasn't a vein, it was just surface water in the in that hole. And he didn't have a well. It was nothing but dead works. Looked good, sounded good, makes a great story, but we didn't get no water. But you know, sad to say, most people live this way out in their religious life. I'll be honest with you, most people I talk to, they are believers. I believe. I know very few out out sinners who just don't believe. I mean, they just don't they ain't serving God. I was talking to a guy one time. He says, "Well, I'm a believer." He says, "Let me ask, let me tell you this." He says, "I I don't I believe. I rarely go to the church. I don't pay my tithes, and I cheat on the Lord from time to time. Do you believe I'm a Christian?" And I said, "This. I love my wife. I don't go home often. I cheat on her, and I don't support her. Do you believe me?" He says, "I don't believe you." I said, "I don't believe you either." <laughs> You know, Jesus says, you shall know them by their fruits. He also said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thou name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And Jesus says, I will say that you shall depart from me, for I knew you not, you workers of iniquity. You know, we can, we can say a lot of things. We can do a lot of good works. But if we're not trusting in Jesus Christ as our Savior and living a holy life for Him, it ain't nothing but dead works. It also says in Hebrews 9, 13, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. My friend, are you just living, doing dead works or are you truly, really living for God?